Hey, hey, welcome to Northern Life Church Online. It's great to have you with us from wherever you're coming from. I'm coming at you from sunny but locked down Sydney, Australia. Please leave us a note in the chat where you're joining us from. Uh, our worship today is a bit different. We're going to be time traveling a little bit. So we're going to be jumping around into some times of worship that we've had throughout the past year and a half. And I've been quite blessed this week as I've been watching these worship videos just to see how the truths which we sang a year and a half ago in these songs are still true today. Even after all this time of singing these songs, they're still true because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Amen. So please worship with us today. I was buried beneath my shame. Lord, there is a river. 
river that flows unrestrained from your heart Canyons of mercy so deep I could never depart Father, your wonders are endless Open my eyes to believe, awake my soul Let everything that has breath praise the Lord Let everything that has breath praise the Lord Praise the Lord With all of my heart with all of my strength, with all that I have, I will sing, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Morning by morning. Morning by morning, your faithfulness shines like the sun. Heavens on fire, alive with the brilliance of love. Father, your wonders are endless. Open my eyes to believe, awake my soul. Let everything that has breath praise the lord let everything that has breath praise the lord praise the lord with all of my heart with all of my strength with all that i have i will sing let everything that has breath praise
previously on Faith in Action. Hey, do you maybe want to skate sometime? Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would really like that. Oh no. Uh, hey Ollie. Uh, I'm so sorry about our skating plans. It just, I've been really busy with a lot of things and it just, it completely slipped my mind. Faith, this is the second time you've cancelled on me. Is everything all right? Or do you just enjoy flaking? Normally I don't flake on people. It's just, this lockdown has been driving me crazy. I've been trying to do walks with everyone and my parents are on my back about school and I just, I'm just trying to say yes to everyone. Well, it seems like by saying yes to everyone else, you've said no to me. At least I know what your yeses mean now. Ollie, wait! Hi everyone, I'm really looking forward to seeing your presentations today. I know it's not ideal having to do it on Zoom, but we've just got to do what we've got to do. So let's make the most of online learning. Uh, Miss, Faith hasn't sent me her work yet, so we can't do our presentation today. Faith? You, Faith? You said you'd do your part and send it to Emmett, right? Yes. So why didn't you do as you promised? Your actions have affected both his and your marks. I'm sorry, miss. You should be saying sorry to Emmett. Sorry, Emmett. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just, I keep making all these promises and they're never following through. You owe me. Big time. Look, I'm going to let you two sort this out in your own time, but that is 10% deducted off both of your marks for handing in your assignment late. <laughs> oh, no! Hmm. Uh, Beth, is your group ready? Yep, we're good to go. Oh, excellent. Can you just remind me what your group's topic was again? Um, so my group talked about uh, the tellings of ancient Greek myth in the Odyssey and how they're re Hey, Faith. James, I need some wisdom here. I feel like my life's falling apart and I'm hurting all the people around me. Hmm. Well, to paraphrase from the Bible, let your yes be yes. If you make a promise, commit to it. Okay. Guess there's no easy way out of this. Thanks, James. See ya. Hey, Ollie. I, um, I just wanted to let you know that next week my calendar is completely free. I wanted to book in some time with you for some outdoor exercising. Um, once we've got a time locked in, I'll even show up 10 minutes early just to wait for you. Can you please give me one more chance? Okay, Faith, but I'm only going to trust you this one last time. Thank you. And thanks for having faith in me. <laughs> you know, I am so going to beat you at skating. <sighs> what? I'm like an Olympic skater. Have you been watching it, by the way? Hi everyone, welcome to church today. Welcome to Northern Life to Church Online. It's so good to be together. I hope you've enjoyed the, ser the service so far. If you haven't had a chance to say hello in the chat and be welcomed by name, I'd encourage you to do it. It's an encouragement to us and I think it's a blessing to you to um, just have people know that you're there and be able to welcome you by name. Um, so I hope you'd take a risk if you haven't done that before. We'd love you to do that. It's good to be together. Great to have this certainty that at least each week we can meet together like this in these uncertain times. It's great to be able to rely on the sovereignty of our Lord and his provision in being able to meet together and worship together and come under his word together in this, um, in this special platform that um, he's provided to us through um, Life Church. So a big welcome to everybody today. Couple of shout outs. I wanted to say a big thank you to our hospitality team, to Pam, to Helen and Leanne, who in various ways over the last week have contributed to getting a cook up done. And that means that we've got some uh, meals in our freezer 
to be able to distribute as needs be. So thank you, ladies. You're a real blessing to us. Um, the other one was a big welcome to two little ones. First one is to Billy Carlisle, who arrived a couple of weeks ago. Congratulations to Mum Jess and to Dad Ben. We're so thrilled to hear of her arrival and um, we can't wait to meet her in person. I know that they've been online each Sunday um, since her birth, so I hope that... Um, yeah, you're just enjoying this special time together and the different challenges that um, lockdown will present to you guys, but a big welcome to Billy. Also, um, a welcome to another baby, part of our extended Northern Life family who arrived unexpectedly on Sunday. So a big shout out to Linda and Lindsay and to Steph Mee, who's um, grandson and nephew, respectively, um, arrived last Sunday, um, Monday, unexpectedly. Um, and we just are um, so glad that his arrival was safe, even though it was quite early. So Monday night, um, that little boy arrived and what a joy he will be to his family. So shout out to Tim and Beck, uh, his parents, and of course, Linda and Lindsay and Steph. Um, congratulations. So it's um, good to be together. I hope that you've been connecting. Um, you know, I can't um, tell you how much we do value um, the way that you keep in contact with each other, keep encouraging each other. It's just wonderful as we each speak to different people to hear of um, the connections that we're each making. And I can't help but think as I um, walk myself and see other people walking, um, the blessing that that can be and the idea that even though we're taking our physical walks and um you know, we're, we're finding different things frustrating. There is also the idea that we are walking um, a spiritual journey and it's a different spiritual journey at the moment. And I hope yours is a blessing to you and that you're able to find what you need. And you know that there's um, resources and people here if you want to call out um, and um, for some more encouragement, um, please do reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Trying to do that as best we can in, in different ways, but we would love you to reach out if um, if there's some other way we can help you. Um, it's been exciting to hear that the second run through of 6260, the winter run through finished um, last week and so many blessed by that. And news on the next one, um, Jono has been talking about that. There'll be news as, um, as the weeks continue about when that will be launched, but probably not until we're back in person. But I'd encourage you to um, to keep your Bible reading up. It's such um, a wonderful way to use our energy, our spiritual energy and our physical energy during lockdown. Also, just thinking about our study of James over the last weeks, it'd be great if you could answer um, this question in the chat. And the question is, how has our study of James impacted you? Um, would love you to write something in the chat just quick, but how has our study of James over the last couple of weeks impacted you? Looking forward to hearing what you have to say. So good to be with you today. Enjoy the rest of the service and um, blessings upon you. See you later. Hi, Mel. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, before we get started on our conversation, I wondered if you'd answer the question that we've posted in the chat today. Yeah, I um, actually found Jono's sermon last week really um, eye-opening. made me really think again about what are the dreams that I'm patiently and the fruit that I'm patiently waiting to harvest, um, especially right now when everyone's in lockdown and we're all having to patiently wait. For me, it's also just about thinking about my dreams and if they line up with what God's heart for my life is and, and then patiently praying into that. Mm, they're real questions, aren't they? Yeah, mm. thank you. Well, um, you're a teacher. Um, we know that you even act as a teacher sometimes from the <laughs> last segment, but you're a teacher, you're a high school teacher and you're a high school teacher of English. So it sounds like teaching and teenagers and making meaning are important to you. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I am pretty passionate about my job. I think it would be a really difficult job to have if you weren't passionate about um, young people and investing into them. Um, I really love the relationships that um, I can invest into through my, my role um, and 
yeah, just when you finally do get that moment where they, especially if they don't love English, at the moment that they enjoy it, um, that's um, totally worth it for me. Um, yeah. Um, and I, I suppose I wanted to pick up on that idea of making meaning is a big part of what you do or mm-hmm. paying attention to how words and other things make meaning. Jono's message today is entitled, Let Your Yes Be Yes. How important is that in your context? Yeah, I think it's so important um, to let your yes be yes as a high school teacher because you are a role model to these students. Um, for some of them, they might not have very many positive role models in their life. And um, as someone who does in the classroom hold that, um, I guess, inherent position of power, they, they need to know that they can trust you um, and believe that you're going to follow through on what you say um, in terms of um, just relationships, but also in terms of what you're teaching. Um, because then if they can trust you, they'll be able to um, deeply learn themselves and, um, yeah, take that out into their life beyond the classroom. Do you feel like that's something you've discovered along the way or is it something you... Um, think about I suppose more explicitly as you think about how what sort of teacher you want to be Um, I think it does come a little bit with time Um, as a beginning teacher you know you're told all the the ways you should be a teacher and how strict you should be and all all different things they say don't smile till Easter and many (laughs) many different things they tell you Um, so I think in my first few years of teaching I was still figuring out exactly um, what that looked like. Um, But the more I teach, the more I do realise it is about relationships and trust and just being my authentic self. And, um, again, just if if I can't model it, then how will I expect my students to model it in the classroom or, or further than that? Do you find yourself thinking carefully about what you can say yes to and I suppose what you can, what you can't say yes to in your professional life? Um, Definitely. Um, Within the classroom, yes. Um, Within the broader scope of being a teacher within school as well, there's so many things um, that you could be saying yes to. And it's definitely something that I do struggle with because I I can get excited and want to join lots of different things and um, help run things. But um, you do have to uh, really consider how much you can give Um, and if I say yes to everything, I won't be able to do everything, um, to the best of my ability. So it is really about balancing that, um, in my life and in my professional life. Um, yeah. Does this approach to, um, to your teaching spill over into other areas of your life? I, I often see your, um, little dog in your Instagram. He looks very obedient and happy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, uh, I think it does um, in many ways. Um, and again, that's, um, I think, part of me being a Christian as well is that um, I don't want to be one person at church, one person at school, one person at home. Um, I really do want to be that Christian or that person who God made me to be in all circumstances and all contexts. So I do hope that that being honest and truthful and um having my yes be yes can flow through um, in all areas of my life yeah thanks so much Mel you've given us lots to think about thank you (laughs) let's pray together father god thank you that we can come together as a church family into your loving presence we praise you for being our creator savior and counselor you are sovereign and powerful faithful and gracious, loving each of us deeply and personally. Though too wonderful to fully understand, on this truth we bring our prayers before you today. We ask that your will be done in our lives. Help us to let go of our own ideas. Help us to listen for and be guided by your Spirit. May our thoughts, words and actions honour your name. Let us be a fruitful part of your kingdom work, even during this time. We can only do this with your help. Open our hearts and minds, Holy Spirit, and strengthen us to persevere. Please renew our faith and our hope each day and give us wisdom in the decisions of daily life. May these difficulties produce in us a deeper love for and a stronger reliance on you. Father, 
You know the concerns of each person here. Protect our families, our loved ones and our mission workers here in Australia and overseas. Bring your peace and comfort to those who are lonely, sick or isolated. Please provide for those whose livelihoods have been affected by the pandemic. Bring your grace to households juggling the stresses of online work, schooling and childcare. Uphold our church leadership and all those involved in our ministries, continuing to inspire, guide and strengthen them. We pray for all our leaders who must be so exhausted, for rest and strength, agreement and wisdom in ongoing decisions that need to be made. Please forgive us for our fears and frustrations. And as you are gracious to us, enable us to let go of hurts and grievances against others. Strengthen our households, family and church relationships and unite us. Thank you for our life hubs and help us find new ways to encourage each other. Please God, use this pandemic to turn many hearts to you and deepen our faith. May people watching find hope and truth in the love of God and the good news of his salvation through Jesus our Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Northern Life. My name is Dan Joandy. Together with my wife, Vicky, and our son, Nicholas, um, we are very blessed to join you as Church Online members every Sunday. Today's reading is from Matthew 5, 33 to 37. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply, Το νέσας να είναι νέ, και το όχι σας να είναι όχι. Κάθε τι πέρα από αυτά προέρχεται από τον πονηρό. All you need to say is simply yes, or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Does anyone remember having their mouth washed out with soap as a kid? I had great parents who disciplined us under the acceptable standards of the day. And so I remember having a cake of soap to bite on after saying some choice words. To be honest, I can still taste the soap today. It was very unnatural. I'm sure soap is not meant to be eaten. Of course, having your mouth washed out with soap was a way of trying to get kids to realise words matter. Swearing was not allowed in our house. Now, when James writes in chapter 5, verse 12, above all, do not swear. He's not primarily meaning four-letter words, but he is emphasising the importance of telling the truth, be it with a yes or a no. James writes, Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Today we're going to look at, firstly, why swearing is wrong, and secondly, why truth-telling is right, why swearing by anything is wrong, and why truth-telling is right. It shouldn't come as any surprise that James is convinced truth-telling is incredibly important, and because of the already significant impact of words which come from righteous tongues born out of righteous hearts, 
We shouldn't need to add weight to these utterances by swearing on something higher than ourselves. Remember James said earlier in his letter in James chapter 3 verse 2, Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. Perfect. Control your tongue and you could be perfect. Speak the truth always and perfection is around the corner. James also said in this chapter that the tongue is so dangerous, sometimes it's basically set on fire by hell itself. He wrote, above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. When James writes above all, he doesn't mean most importantly. He's not saying disregard all I've just said. He's simply saying, In conclusion, wrapping it all up, finally, don't swear by heaven or earth or anything else. So number one, why swearing is wrong. James, as we've said many times, is basing his letter on the teachings of Jesus, particularly his Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus said in Matthew 5, 33 to 37, Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath. But fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the great city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Swearing is wrong because it presupposes knowing the future. One of the primary arenas of life designed to keep us all in check as creatures in contrast to the creator is the future. Human beings like to make big plans, like to convince ourselves that we can predict the future. Of course, Jesus did say in Luke 14 that if you're going to build a tower, you should run some numbers on whether you can pull it off. But that was more about the cost of being a disciple. Jesus was saying, don't commit to something without considering the cost. Here, Jesus and James are saying, the future belongs to the Lord. Don't cross the line into his domain, into his responsibility. When we swear by heaven, or by whatever, that we will do so and so, we're crossing the line. We don't know the future. And so therefore, we could be speaking falsely. As Rachel said a few weeks ago in a sermon, we plan, God laughs. I'm not sure God laughs cynically. Maybe more of a wry smile. Because he never stops loving us, does he? And compassionately drawing us towards the truth. The future belongs to the Lord. Last week, I mentioned um, about a mate of mine who just got married. In fact, he was married Saturday a week ago. It's about eight days ago. Um, And it was the day before I last preached. And I was celebrating last Sunday the fact that he had waited with patience and purity until his marriage. And him and his wife had this wonderful Month-long honeymoon planned. Well, six days ago, on the first day of their honeymoon, right after their wedding, the first day, the four-wheel drive they were driving on um, along a remote road in the Northern Territory, rolled. They had a terrible accident, seriously injuring my friend and miraculously leaving his wife completely unharmed. They were flown to Adelaide for emergency spinal surgery and right now he's in he's in a really bad way they're trying to make sense of the future which has now become their past and which has altered their future none of us know the future it belongs to the lord don't swear that you'll do so and so because you just don't know what will happen and because our words matter we don't want to be speaking falsehoods if we can help it It's significant that Jesus says beyond yes and no comes from the evil one. 
because the evil one is always trying to steal what belongs to God and make it his. The future belongs to the Lord, not the devil and not us. Swearing is wrong because it diminishes the authority of our words. As we often remember at Northern Life, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Words have power. God's words have all power. And our words also have significant power. And this power is diminished when we need to say, I swear to God, I swear on my grandmother's grave, or I just, I swear. Why do I need to swear if my words are reliable anyway? Let your yes be yes and your no, no. Have you ever known someone who always told the truth? It is so refreshing to interact with someone who is simply honest, isn't it? You can trust their words. Their word is their bond. Swearing is wrong, thirdly, because if we fail, we dishonour the name of the person we have sworn by. Leviticus 19.12 says, Do not swear falsely by my name, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Failure is part of the human condition. Apart from Jesus, no one gets it right all of the time. When we swear to God, or swear by his name, we put ourselves in a position where we will inevitably defame him through our failure to come through with what we have pledged. The name of the Lord is not to be taken in vain. The name of the Lord is the name above every other name. The name of the Lord is holy. That's why, as fallible human beings, we don't swear that we will accomplish something in the future and guarantee that outcome with the honour of God's name. Three reasons why swearing is wrong. Now, why truth-telling is right. Number one, because Jesus said so. God said it, and that settles it. Jesus said in Matthew five thirty-seven, Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. I started to recognise about ten years ago a tendency for people, especially young people, but not exclusively young people, to respond to a request or invitation with, that should be okay, that should work. I should be able to come to that event that you're planning that requires exact numbers for catering. I, 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 should, I should be able to accomplish that task that you're asking me to do and relying on me to do. I, I, I should be able to. Now I hear you say, well, at least we're not presuming on the future. Maybe that's the reason. Personally, I think it's... It's a classic example of the underbelly of our society that is chronically, diametrically opposed to the words of Jesus and James. Let your yes be yes and your no, no. Remember, we're allowed to say no. Just say one or the other and commit. Amen. Number two, why truth-telling is right. Yes and no are at the core of salvation. Now, I get it that no one comes to Jesus except the Father draw them, but a simple study of the Scriptures will reveal that there is a response of free will in salvation, of repentance and faith which is required. Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they were unwilling to come to him. Unwilling. They said no. Yes and no are at the core of the free will that God has given his creation. Even when we pray for our loved ones to come to Christ and we ask God to save them, even then the Lord is still waiting for them to say yes. Sometimes they say no right up until their graves. If yes and no are at the core of salvation, we should be careful about telling the truth with our yes and with our no. Number three, it's at the core of worship. When a group of people gather in the name of Jesus to worship together and we agree that the greatness of God and his name's renown should be proclaimed in all the world to every tribe and nation and we say together amen to that, which means so be it, together we are saying a hearty yes. Worship is about yes and no, isn't it? No to worshipping the gods made by human hands. 
and yes to worshipping the Lord of heaven and earth. Let your yes be yes and your no, no. This is at the heart of true worship. Number four, why truth telling is right. It's at the core of great relationships. I am more and more convinced that if you could break down relationship health to one aspect alone, it would be the art of request and the art of acceptance or denial of that request. In every area of life in relationship, there is needed a safe space for people to make a request. Like, can we do more of this or less of that? Could you do this and not that? When this happens in a relationship, we feel a certain way. And the other person who has received a request in a free world has the right to honestly say yes or no. Is that your experience of relationship? Do you allow people to, to say no and yes? Truthful yeses, truth, truthful noes transform relationship. James is big on people relating in godly ways. Godly relationships require yes and no, which brings clarity and health. Number five, why truth-telling is right is at the core of great leadership. The greatest deficiency in leadership is the failure of nerve to say yes when required and to say no when required. Think about it. At every level of leadership, from politics to the military to the clergy to education to business to the family, especially family, leadership crumbles when people are scared to say yes or no. So often we get bullied into saying yes, sometimes by people this big, when we know the answer is no. Leadership involves truth-telling, which regularly comes back to yes and no. Jesus knows what he's talking about. Number five, where truth-telling is right, it's an utter relief. There's a reason, you know, why people who are living a lie so frequently get to the point where they are blasé about covering their tracks. And the reason is that people come to the point where they want to get found out. Living a lie is exhausting. The truth is liberating. Amen? Like me, you might know of at least one example of a person in previous generations who maintained a complete double life. One family in Sydney and another family in Melbourne. That's a true story. No one knew the other existed until the wives met at the joint husband's funeral. You might think how despicable and yet also how exhausting to live that sort of a life. Have you ever told a lie and then found yourself needing to keep it going? Let your yes be yes and your no, no. Number six, why truth telling is right. Because truth is found in between the way and the life. If you want to find the way to life and life eternal, you need the truth. And the truth is a person whose name is Jesus. Jesus said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. The way from way to truth, the way from way to life is the truth. When we're honest with ourselves and with God, we can see the light of truth in Christ. So are you tired of living a lie? Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven, twenty-eight. The truth is that but we need a saviour. The truth is that we've all fallen short of the perfect standards of the Lord. John 1.8 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Truth is the beginning of forgiveness which is the beginning of healing and wholeness. David wrote about this in, in Psalm 32 when he wrote, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me because of my sin. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity, I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. It's a psalm about the power of truth, isn't it? 
Lies keep us in darkness where sin grows. The truth takes us into the light where there is healing and freedom. If you're sick of living a lie, come to the Father now. Come to him and and own up. Receive the forgiveness that comes through the truth. Luke 6.45 says, For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. God can heal our heart so that our mouth can speak the truth. Yes, be yes. No, be no. Let's try it. Let's try it. Covering every yes and no with love in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord God, we confess to you that we are a broken people. And we're afraid. We're afraid of what people will think of us. We're afraid of what you think of us. Thank you for the invitation to come out of the darkness, out of the lie and into the truth and into relationship with you, into healing and wholeness and freedom and the liberty of forgiveness and being filled with your spirit, clothed in the righteousness of Christ and enabled to live a life of integrity. Lord, we want to be people of the light, not the dark. We want to be people who, with truth-filled words, can be part of the kingdom advancing love in action. Thank you so much for your grace and mercy and compassion that is available to us right now. We're meeting here online in our homes. I thank you, Lord Holy Spirit, that you're closer to us than we could ever imagine. You're in every family home right now, every individual person, no matter where we are in the world, you are with us. And you've invited us into the truth of your Son, and we're just grateful. For those who need to make a a fresh commitment, we pray for grace now in the name of Jesus. Would you do a work in us? We pray in his name. Amen.
Sometimes on this journey I get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness Is a canvas for your strength My story isn't over My story's just begun And failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does Yeah, failure won't define me that's what my father does Ooh, lay your burdens down Ooh, here in the father's house Check your shame at the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the father's house not the end game the journey's where you are you never wanted perfect you just wanted my heart and the story isn't over if the story's just done failure's never final when the father's in the room and failure's never final when the father's in the room shame at the door cause it ain't welcome anymore ooh you're in the father's house prodigals come home the helpless find hope Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Prison doors fling wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room.
Stand before 